Hello and welcome to Kingdom Life Radio. This is Kenny Hebert and uh, Chris Baker is with me here. This Well, uh, this week we're going to talk about the issue of holiness. Um, and what we're doing overall here is looking at signs of the presence uh, of the Spirit in a believer's life. You know, how do we know he's there? Yes. So as you say, last week we we said he he communicates the fact that we're adopted and he's Jesus-centered, so he's turning us to Christ. And then today, I thought we'd you know think about that the Holy Spirit enables the believer and the church to pursue holiness, to pursue <laughs> holiness. Um, so let's look at Second um, Corinthians three verses seventeen and eighteen. This is in NAS. Uh, it says, "Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled faces." Face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord and are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord the Spirit. Okay, so there's nothing more to say about that. It's such a you know clear text, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little a, a little kind of mysterious. Yes, there is. <laughs> couple of verses here. What's going on? Um, why don't you read, Kenny, the the Good News translation of this same text, 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18. I think that makes it a little more understandable. Yes. It says, now the Lord in this, pa- oh, excuse me. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, let me start all over. I, I, <laughs> sure. it, it, it's caused me for a, a, a pause there. Now the Lord in this message is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, is present, there is freedom. All of us then reflect the glory of the Lord with uncovered faces, and that same glory coming from the Lord, who is the Spirit, transforms us into his likeness in an ever greater degree of glory. Okay, so th- this text is talking about the believer being transformed, right? Being yes. mo- moving into God's likeness. And, you know, we're talking about the Spirit, right? And he's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> he's the Holy Spirit. So this text is talking about you know, moving from glory to glory, moving into becoming more like Jesus and more like our heavenly father, that we're, we're going to reflect uh, his character, not that we're becoming God, but that we're becoming a good and we're becoming holy uh, as he is holy. Right. Yes. So the, the, what this means is that the Holy spirit in our lives should produce an aversion to sin um, on, on one hand, but on the other hand, he should also produce a love for God's law and obedience to it. Right. So it, it's one of these, you know, two sides of the same coin. We, we see this all the time in the Christian life. Yes. So the Holy spirit in the life of the believer should cause us to, to, uh, not like sin and to like being good, to right. like holiness. I mean, maybe you've had that experience where you encounter something after becoming a Christian um, that used to tempt you, and now it, it no longer holds any appeal for you. It may even disgust you. Mm-hmm. And that's a that's a glorious thing. That's a real yes. Holy Spirit thing. Sometimes that happens, you know, we're kind of instantaneously, miraculously. Sometimes it takes some more work, and we'll, we'll reflect on that. But, you know, historically... Great moves of the Spirit have always led to an intense desire for holiness. And in Acts 19, you know, we see people rejecting magic that they had been into. Um, but one of my favorite examples is the Welsh revival of the 1800s. Um, yes. And when, when that revival took place, uh, bars closed, you know, people stopped their heavy drinking. Um, and the mines had difficulty working because the uh, the mules, the donkeys, um, stopped working. And and the reason for that was because uh, before people started getting saved, um, they would treat these poor animals, you know, terribly, and they would curse at them and swear at them. And after becoming Christians, the Holy Spirit was, you know, removing that foul language, yeah. and the, and the donkeys didn't know how to respond. That you know, that was those were the <laughs> commands they knew were these this foul language uh that was just a wonderful kind of practical example of the the holy spirit's work in that revival so you know these kinds of things happen because of the holy spirit and 
I, I love that in Romans 12, that whole chapter, um, Paul is talking about the issue of indwelling sin. But in Romans 8, which we're going to reflect on here in a moment, um, he's just talking about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So before coming to Christ, we're struggling with this indwelling sin. But when we give our lives to Jesus, um, we have the indwelling Holy Spirit that we've been talking about throughout this uh, radio series. Yes. So, so the Spirit comes into our lives when we give our life to Christ, and he causes an aversion to sin and a love for God. And he does this um, in, in, in two ways. Uh, again, two sides of, of the same coin. He does it by enabling us to fulfill the law, and he, he does it by enabling us to reject sin. So let's take a look at Romans 8 um, and, and work through this a little bit. Um, oh, good. So why don't you read Romans 8, 2 through 4. It reads here, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh as, as, and as an offering for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh so that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So there's a lot in that text, but I really want you to get the punchline of verse um, four, that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. And that we're walking now, not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So the law is fulfilled in us and not in our own effort, but in what Jesus has done, what he's accomplished. And he shares his accomplishment with us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's fulfilling Old Testament promises. Um, Ezekiel chapter uh, 36, verses 26 and 27. What, what does that say? It says, Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you'll be careful to observe my ordinances. Yeah. So, you know, here God had promised in the Old Testament that he's going to remove this heart of stone, our hard heartedness toward him and his law and his ways and our, our, our aversion to holiness, to being good. And he's going to put the spirit in our hearts. And that's going to cause us to walk in his ordinances, to want to want to do right. You know? So, you know, rather than being children of wrath condemned by the law, we're now children of God. We're adopted into his family. We're, we're now able um, to keep the law in the power of the spirit. Yes. So, yeah, this, this is a good. And so the way I've thought about this, um, I imagine it, it's like. You remember when you were a kid and you tried to blow up a balloon and you didn't, maybe you didn't know, or you weren't able to tie the balloon off, you know, mm -hmm. and you, you blow the air in and the balloon inflates and then it all goes out again. Yeah. Right? That's kind of been human beings trying to keep the law, trying to be good in and of our own effort. You know, we maybe can pump it up for a time, but then the air all goes out. So what Paul is saying here is Jesus has come and done it for us. He blows up the balloon, he ties it off, and he gives it to us. He says, now you got it. Now you have the, the inflated balloon. Now you have the, the righteousness of the law. Um, and Jesus, you know, hands, hands that to us. So he enables us to keep the law because he perfectly kept the law. That's one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is that the Holy Spirit enables us to subdue the flesh. Yes. So let, yes. let's keep let's keep reading in Romans eight, and let's just do it verse by verse. That'll probably be the the uh, the easiest way to get into this. So, what is verse five of Romans eight? It says, "For those who are who excuse me, for those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who are according to the spirit, the things of the spirit." So, what are the two kinds of people Paul is discussing here? There's people that, that walk after the flesh, and there's people that walk after the Spirit. Yeah, right. So the Holy Spirit is given to those who believe in Jesus Christ. He's there, 
and he enables us to live the Christian life yeah. in his power, not in our power. All right, now verse 6 of Romans 8. For the mind is set on the flesh, excuse me, for the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the spirit is life and peace. So what are the two mindsets here and what do they produce? One is it one one's set on the flesh, and then it all does produce death. And mm-hmm. one is one is a mind set on the spirit, and it's life and peace. Life and peace, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, what our thoughts are focused upon. What's residing in our consciousness, what we think upon, directly connects with what we do. And we're going to talk more about this in, in the next episode. Yes, the, yeah. This, this renewing of the mind, you know, the mind set on the spirit, the things of the spirit. Um, so, you know, are we thinking about our desires or are we thinking about what the Holy Spirit wants of us? Um, are we just relying on our feelings? You know, we tend to be, we're very feeling oriented people. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't feel right about this or that, that, that I'm going to do that because that makes me feel good. And that's, what's important, you know? Um, but we're to think we're not to just rely on where, how our emotions are pulling us along. Proverbs 23, seven says for, as he thinks within himself, so he is. Yes. As one thinks within himself, so he is. Um, so, you know, we need, we need to engage our minds. We need to think, um, let's go on to, uh, verses seven and eight. Seven, or, no, yeah, seven and eight. yeah, but it reads here because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward God for it does not subject itself to the law of God for it is not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So set the mindset on the flesh, hostile to God, but those those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So if we find the things of God irritating, disagreeable, confining, instead of freeing, what does that mean? Not yielding to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah, you're not <laughs> giving, yielding giving to our flesh. To the, that's right. That's right. You're still living the fleshly life. You're still living a sinful life. You're letting your sinful desires guide your life rather than the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Your mind is set in hostility to things of God. I, I, you know, the, I, one of the times I, I kind of first really encountered this phenomenon was when I was in college. And there were a bunch of us guys, um, you know, this was a secular college, but there was a wonderful, vibrant Christian fellowship there. And a bunch of us guys got together one day and we said, you know what? We're just noticing in the culture around us, but even in our Christian fellowship, that there's a lot of coarse humor. There's a lot of humor at, at women's expense. There's a lot of objectifying of, of women. You know, guys have posters on their walls of women. You know, even if there's not, I'm not talking about nude posters, but you know, just, you know, it's like, what, what exactly is going on here? Um, and that there, there was a lot of sexual humor that was going on. And just generally how we talked about women wasn't, wasn't Christian. It wasn't holy. It was worldly. It was fleshly. Um, and so a, a number of us committed ourselves and said, you know, we're going to stop doing this. And we're going to hold each other accountable to that. And we're going to check in with each other from time to time as to how we're doing. And what was interesting was that there were a number of guys who didn't like this, you know, who said, oh, you're, you're being too puritanical. You're being too rigid. Come on. It's not that big a deal. And pretty much all those guys eventually lost their faith. Uh, you know, they they weren't being drawn to the things of God. They weren't in love with God's uh, law. Um, they were really still in love with the flesh, and they were setting their minds on the things of the flesh rather than on the things of the spirit. So, you know, the outcome uh, of living life in the flesh is, is, is death. Yes. Whereas living life in the spirit, you know, as we saw before, is life and peace. Mm. Now, now let's look at Romans 8, 9, and 10. Okay. Uh, oh, they actually have 9 and 10 here. You want to read 8 also? Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Yes, excuse me. Read 8, 9, and 10. Okay. And 8 says, starts off as, And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. If Christ is in you, 
Though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of the righteous because of righteousness. Yeah, you know, this is just wonderful positional truth. You yeah. are a Christian, you have the spirit, right? If you don't have the spirit, then we can really question whether you are a Christian. You know, you, all Christians have the Holy Spirit, as we've talked about earlier in this series. Right. And the spirit makes us alive to God and dead to sin. Um, now read verse 11 of Romans 8. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Okay, so what is this verse talking about? Is, is Paul talking about a present reality or a future reality? Both. <laughs> Both. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, the answer is, he's talking about the present or the future? Yes. Yes, he, yes. He's, talk, he's talking about both. He's yeah. talking about both. There is, certainly we're looking forward to a future when Jesus returns and we're set free from sin and death and we'll no longer have these struggles. We'll just love the good and we'll totally abhor the evil. Um, but Paul's also talking about the Holy Spirit now is bringing life to your mortal bodies, right? So that's the present, to your mortal bodies, through his spirit who dwells in you now, who yes. dwells in you now. So this is this is a present reality. Um, it, it's, it's, we don't just say, oh, well, one day I'll be good in the sweet by and by. You know? yeah. um, I can be good now because I've got the Holy Spirit in, in my life. The Holy Spirit who who raised Jesus from the dead. That's the kind of power I have in my life. Dead, dead raising power. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's he, pretty awesome. <laughs> and he's still, he's still, he's still the same God today. Yeah. The same God That's that gave right. his life initially. They said uh, you were dead in your sin. Now you're alive. You become aware of God. Then there, there's the, the, the same spirit that did that in the very beginning of birthing life in us. It's yes. going to continue to stay at work to produce that same kind of life in our mortal flesh. He's never going to stop. He's, even if we are irritated by it. I was thinking like when we, were, we were talking about that. It was like, you know, when we're young Christians, we initially try to hold on to, there's some things we hold on to and there's some things we just kind of let go of is our passions change. And then there's, there's sometimes there's a battle over some of the things that we wrestle with um, mm-hmm. that we're trying to, we want to let go of them. We don't want to let go of them. And there's right. that wrestling, and, and that's part of the process of maturing and um, and growing. And and as long as we want to keep holding on, we're going to keep. It's going to keep bringing, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, death to us. But actually, Ephesians. I was reading that yesterday. Um, he talks about um, uh, you, you, that's not how you learn Christ, you know. And then he says, you know, put off the the old manner of life. Mm-hmm. In, in, in the in the corrupting nature of the deceitful desires, mm-hmm. and his idea is like you put that old, you're putting it off because if you don't put it off, it's 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 deceitful desires and it's got a corrupting nature. Yeah. It's got a disintegrating yeah. nature, and if you allow it to continue, if we allow it to, to continue to reside in us, it's going to start to disintegrate us internally. We're yeah. not going to be whole. And God's pushing us to not just a holiness like it is in living right, but also wholeness as a person, right? This right. God's wanting to be a whole person. The holistic approach to who we are is our thinking and our action. And, and so as long as we're giving way to those things of the flesh and we're, we're not responding to the Holy Spirit in us, it's going to continue to disintegrate what the work of the Spirit is doing in us. And we're, it's just going to be at odds until we start to, and we real all we we all want wholeness, but we don't want to go through the work of it. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And there, and we're just you know, uh, Paul's going to touch on that just a little further along here in Romans eight. Yes, and there's a, his part and an our part. So, so let's yeah, this is excellent. So, uh, read chap, uh, verse twelve of Romans eight. Yes, it says twelve and thirteen. It says though, so then, brethren, we are under obligation not to the flesh. To live according to the flesh. For if you are, are living according to the flesh, you die. But if you by the spirit are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Okay, so, so what's the result of being indwelled by the Holy Spirit? It's because uh, of who we are in Christ that we're we're free 
not to sin. Amen. We're free not to sin. We don't have to sin. We're free to set our minds on the Lord. We're we're free to pursue good things in life. We're we're free to be holy and righteous. We can can do that now because of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We couldn't do it without him, but we can do it now. And so we're able, as he says, by the Spirit, we're able to put to to death the deeds of the body. Yes. Um, And then verse, verse 13, what does it say? Verse 13. Read that, read that once more. For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Yeah. So again, it's it's that two sides of the same coin. Yes. Paul, Paul loves to use that kind of thinking. He, he says you must put to death sin, uh, uh, sin in your life, right? So it's not like we're, we're, we're passively just sitting there, right? Um, I mean, there's two extremes here. One extreme, uh, and, and I actually was talking with somebody about this fairly recently, where the person says, oh, I'm a Christian now, so I, I will never sin. That's, I'm, I will never sin. I'm like, really? Do you live in the real world? <laughs> uh, I, I'm not really sure I quite grasp how there are people who can say that. I, I'm no longer, I no longer sin. You know, I, yeah, you're no longer a sinner. That no longer defines who you are. You don't have to sin, but you still do sin. And this is why Paul says, you have to deal with this. You have to put to death the deeds of the body. You have to put to death sin. But the other side of the coin, you do it by the power of the Spirit Amen. in his Amen. power. You would be hopeless to defeat sin in your life. And and particularly, you know, as you were saying, Kenny, there are some things that kind of hang on, you know. Yeah. Call that, you know, besetting sin. You know, there are things that hang on that are hard to get rid of that are kind of intertwined into who you are. Um, right. And it, it takes time and it takes some work um, to get get rid of those things. So because of the spirit, then we're not only alive to Christ, but we're able to live a life of holiness. We're able to walk and pursue righteousness rather than sin. Um, we can reject sinful desires by the power of the Spirit, and we we grow in our desire to please God, to do His will. So the Holy Spirit empowers us in that putting to death the deeds of the body and making alive our spirits to righteousness. We live, we're born again by the Spirit, and we walk we live out our lives. We we conduct our behavior by the power of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. There's a oh, I just lost my train of thought there. Well, this this is the <laughs> the third sign of the Spirit in the believer's life that we're talking yes. about. And you know, this is something that is not necessarily bells and whistles. These are deep things uh, yeah. that God works into our lives. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's um, when you're talking about the you're free not to sin. You know, some people will talk like you know, like act like the grace of God is given to us, so we're free. Yes, we're free, and then they think that means free to do what we want. Mm-hmm. Grace is not the not the freedom to do what we want. It's the it's the power to do what we ought. Yeah. Yes. Very good. And, and, very and, so, good. and, and it's all by the power of the Holy Spirit. But so that God didn't just save us just to go about our life and do whatever we want. It's it now to, is to become a whole different person than we ever were before. And uh, yeah. So those uh, those two extremes. I, I'm not sure I didn't say the second one. You know, the extreme of saying, "Oh, I don't, I don't sin anymore." Well, that's that's ridiculous. We have to fight sin. But there's also the other extreme. Well, I can never defeat sin. I just have to wait for you know the second coming. Um, and I, I'll just keep living my life and I'm, I'm forgiven. So it's okay. Even though yeah. I keep sitting. No, no. Paul, Paul's saying, look, you <laughs> have the spirit in your life. You can fight sin in your life. You can pursue holiness. Yeah. There, there's a, uh, there's, and we're in chapter eight of Romans and what we share is kind of like in the middle of the, you know, between it's, it's sandwiched between two things about the, about the spirit and Romans yes. one, eight, one, uh, it says, therefore, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And this is, we're talking about this. Sometimes people will hear what we're talking about and they'll, they'll feel 
this weight of like of condemnation because they, they're not living right yet and struggling with it. But the reality is if the spirit of God's there, we've experienced a life in Christ. We're, we've been forgiven. We've been given as a gift, the righteousness of Christ. So we're no longer any c- condemnation, but that doesn't mean we are then free to do what we want. Like we're talking about and then, but we're, there's this reality that, I can't change this. I can't, you know, uh, you know, I can, I can, I can put a, a real good show on and change some external things. Like, you know, someone gets, gets, it gets you, does something and we can act like it doesn't bother us, but inside we're like, we were wanting to hit them. You know, yeah. there's something that's still not right yet inside of us. God yeah. wants us to be in, in, internally also holy that we are not, we're not looking for revenge and, and to get back at someone, even though we're on an external, no one thinks it's there, but we know it's there. And yeah. so that, that reality that we're still weak in our flesh to accomplish this, the last part in verse 26, where he says, likewise, the spirit helps us in our weakness. Yes, the power of God's there, but he's never going to stop being there. He's going to continue to work in us, continue to empower us and continue to call us to respond to him, even in the midst of all our struggles. And here it is. The reality is God's grace towards us is that he knows how bad we are and how bad we'll still be. And he still loves us <laughs> unconditionally yeah. and enduringly. It's unshakable. And here, it's like, so likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. But we don't know what to pray for as we are. But the Spirit intercedes for us. He's there in our weakness, and he intercedes for us. He's, he's working on us. He's, he's, and so he's interceding for us. It goes on for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit. Because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So he's interceding for us, knowing what God's wanting to do in us. And he's working in us and he's trying to bring us to that place to actually live that out. So we, so even as we're talking about this, we, we're, it's about the Holy Spirit's work. He's going to continue to work in us to bring about what we're talking about. Life in the spirit, living according to the spirit, not according to our flesh anymore. And, right. and, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknow, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he we that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And here's his purpose, the spirit. He's working to change us into the very image of Christ and conform us yeah. to his image. And it he's, he's saying he, he uses all these things, even in our failures, even all these struggles, and, and and he uses those things to work together for the good. And and we think the good is like, oh, it's gonna be something good for me. Yeah, the good for me is to be like Christ. That's and sometimes right. we misinterpret that. I did as a young Christian. Oh, he's going to sure. do some really cool things for me. Yeah, the cool <laughs> thing is he's going to actually change me to actually empower me to live for the Spirit in such a way I can actually delight in the life that Christ is living through me. And he's using all these things to mature us to that place. And he's actually using things in me to help you and using things in you to help me. And it's not just like, right. oh, all the things just happen to me. All things. All things yeah. work together. For our good, and not just for individuals, but that the church becomes this living expression, not just individuals, but this people, people of God, that are a real real expression of the spirit of God and and, and expressing the life of Christ through them. So the the, the community is living according to the spirit, not just an individual. So it's it's, it's beyond just individuals. Yeah, and the community, like like my example of our, our men's group in college, you know, we help one another yes. to pursue holiness. That's one of the ways the Holy spirit, you know, works in and through us. So, so look, as we're wrapping up, I, you know, if, if it might, maybe you're listening to this program and you're not a Christian um, and you've got stuff in your life that's just killing you. You know, the, the things of the flesh lead to death and, and you're honest and you realize that. You know, we want to just say that when you give your life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit will come into your life. And we can't promise that you'll be instantly you know, set free from the things you're struggling with, but you'll have the living God and the power of him who raised Jesus from the dead in your life. Uh, so we encourage Amen. you to, to turn to Jesus and ask his forgiveness and, and throw yourself upon him and invite the Holy Spirit into your life. And for those of us who are Christians, we need to keep preaching the truth to ourselves. We need to remind ourselves <laughs> we have the Holy Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead. That's the power we have in our lives. And we need to cooperate with him. We need to put to death these things. He, we can't do it 
outside of his power, but we need to be engaged with him. Amen. Amen. Well, that's it for this week. We will talk to you again next week. You can find us on Chris's website, vertical101.com or my website, letyourkingdomcome.com. You guys have a blessed week. Bye-bye.